Hey everyone, I'm Tassinix. Welcome back to another mod guide video. This time we're digging into Admiral Trench. This is a hotly requested character and team from all of you, and I love this team. It's actually pretty good value. You, you have to put a lot of mod love into them to, to get exactly what you're looking for, but for having no Grand Arena Omicrons applied, you can draw better teams than this to beat it. So I like that a lot. Let, uh, before we go into the details of his kit, as always, let's go ahead and do the TLDR for Admiral Trench. Set types should be full tenacity across the board. Arrow should be speed or a very fast health. Circle should be health. Triangle should be health. Cross should be tenacity. His turn order is generally going to be fourth on the five-man team. And his stat priority should be tenacity over health over speed. Um, but that said, you know, ranking speed last, try not to have his speed too much slower than 280. I'd say a good nominal speed's about 300, so you could do plus minus 20. Um, I see some people, myself included, around that 320-ish mark, and I could see somebody doing like 280 and still getting most of the same results, but if you go too much lower than that, he's not going to get to cycle turns quite as well, uh, I think, and yeah, it's it, it makes a difference that he's able to go. So let's go ahead now and talk about his leadership, Feared Tactician. Separatist allies have plus 30% max health, max protection, and potency, and they have plus 10% speed, not 10 speed, 10% speed, excluding Galactic Legend allies, for each ally with tech and each enemy with extortion. This is potentially outrageous, all right? Because techs come from Wat Tambor. There are a total of three techs. So that's a potential of 30% speed handed out to those, you know, uh, what is this? For each ally. Yeah, this is this is for the whole team then. So if, if all three techs are out, that's 30% speed gained by everybody. Uh, yeah, because it doesn't require that the character that the character to get the bonus has to have the tech. So not only do you have that up to thirty percent coming out from the three techs, but then extortion is put out by Newt Gunray, and it goes onto one character, but then it can be recast in a couple of turns, uh, and it can also spread. But I think the spread is only under Newt Gunray lead, so probably not. Um, I have to think about it. No, I think the consequences are worse if it's under new gun raid lead. Either way, if they're not killing your characters or preventing tech from going out, and they're not managing extortion, you just run away with the speed, so it's outrageous. Whenever a Separatist ally inflicts a debuff on an enemy, they gain 20% offense for three turns, stacking limit once per turn. While a Separatist ally has a tech, they have plus 100% potency. When a non-Geonosian Separatist ally gains Bactoid Shield Generator tech, they dispel stealth from themselves, and while they have Bactoid Shield Generator tech, they are immune to stealth and gain 100% critical avoidance and defense. So, this is what uh, turns Django Fett into the tank for this team. He's going to start the battle with his contract paid out, he's going to have damage immunity, uh, and he's going to have that for two turns. So if he ends up getting the tank tech handed out by Watt, he will never gain stealth, dispel stealth from himself, and then when Dooku puts the rest of the team under stealth, if they don't have a way to get rid of it, uh, they're stuck hitting your damage immune Django for a couple of turns while you guys just get to do whatever you want. It's pretty nice. All right, while a Separatist ally has a heal over time, they have plus 30% counter chance, and while they have a protection over time, they have plus 30% defense penetration. While an enemy has burning, they can't assist, counter attack, or gain bonus turn meter. So that burning is also going to come from Django Fett. That's an AoE. It can uh, affect everybody on the enemy team, and his AI will use that ability first. It's nice. I don't usually spend much time covering anything about TW, because you, you guys know I'm such a Grand Arena-focused player, but I just want to say, for the sake of this team, you really don't have to mod it any differently uh, for TW versus Grand Arena, and I will say uh, he is a 3 Omicron TW character, but he's actually really good in TW. Like, he's used in the top end of uh, the gauntlet for TW uh, very regularly, strong team, uh, even stronger right now because there is a, you know, Datacron uh, affecting this team for Wat Tambor. So, 
obviously when you have Datacrons in Season 4, it's even more potent, but I just wanted to say that for this being a zero Omicron Grand Arena team, you can get a lot of mileage in TW with the same modding if you decided to apply them. So this, all three of the Omis are great. Obviously, you would be taking this leadership if you were so inclined. Okay, let's talk about his unique. I smell fear, and it smells good. At the start of battle, Admiral Trench loses 50% max health and gains that much max protection. While Trench is active, Separatist allies have plus 50% potency. At the start of his turn, he gains a protection over time, 10% for two turns, and while Trench has protection up, he is immune to buff immunity and healing immunity. So this is a frequently asked question about modding Trench. Um, I, I had a good discussion with some folks on Discord with this the other day, but they were they were saying, you know, Tess, I, I don't agree. Uh, why do you go with the health primary? Shouldn't it be protection to get the most out of this? It's like, I, I think for the most survivability overall from this entire kit, I don't think it's close. I think it is uh, going with health and all, and here's why. You see that the, so you remember that the leadership's giving the 30% max health and protection boost. Okay, fine. That's gonna execute after this unique does, right? So let's say that me with my health modding on has some number, some round number, like 100,000 max health on it, all right? That's gonna get cut in half, so 50K max health is gonna be added on to my protection, and then the remainder of that health, plus the blown up protection figure, are both gonna be raised by 30% after that leadership kicks in, right? So to maximize his protection gained from this, you would actually want to have it be health, right? Because it's 50% of his max health that he would lose. So the value of that number for what he would gain this protection is at its largest when he's modded for health. Furthermore, it's not just about um, health and protection, right? He's got protection over time, which is cool, still favors protection, but I still go with health for the, the protection up, all right? He gives himself, um, I wanna say, a 40% protection up from his special. We'll cover it in a minute. But I believe there may be other uh, protection up sources on this team that can affect him as well. And whenever he has protection up, he is immune to buff immunity and healing immunity. That's really significant. There are a number of matchups where running into that's a serious pain. And if you have him modded for protection primaries, that ends up meaning that uh, any protection ups that he gain are so absolutely minuscule uh, that it comes off very easily for your opponent. And you want them to actually... Uh, feel like they need to dispel it instead of trying to push through it. And we'll see why here in, another, uh, in a moment. So the first time each enemy loses all protection, at the end of that turn they are feared for one turn, which can't be dispelled, evaded, or resisted. Whenever another non-droid separatist ally is damaged by an attack, defeated, or evades, so think about that, whenever they get hit, then whenever they take damage, are defeated or evades, Trench has a 50% chance to gain a 100% turn meter? Limit once per turn. Whenever an enemy dispels protection up from Trench, they are inflicted with shock for two turns, which can't be evaded or resisted. Again, guy's got another banger, TW only, which doesn't really require you to mod it any differently, but it's a nasty bit of business. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about his basic, unfinished business. Deal special damage to target enemy and shock them for two turns. If the target was already shocked, stun them for one turn. During Trench's turn, allies with tactical supremacy, the unique effect, gain a heal over time and a protection over time, 10%, for two turns. And again, this is another good TW only there. Excuse me. So. We saw there from the unique though, whenever an ally is taking damage, he has a 50% chance to gain 100% turn meter. So that's why I'm saying like, you can have him decently fast. You don't need to worry about pushing him to be extraordinarily fast because you'll have this turn meter go off a decent amount of the time, but you don't want to be relying on a coin flip. Anybody who's ever used the Hans Millennium Falcon Rebel Fleet has been let down by uh, you know a 50% chance not breaking your way multiple times in a row. So don't be too dependent on that. That's why we want to have a decent basis of speed. Okay, his special, net positive. Dispel buffs, deal special damage to target enemy, inflict stagger for two turns, 
and call all other non-droid separatist allies to assist. So think about that. You're inflicting the stagger on the target, then you're calling the mass assist, so you can pick out the highest priority or the highest turn meter enemy with that and uh, just lock them right on down. That's nice. Then, non-droid separatist allies gain the effect tactical supremacy for two turns, which can't be copied. Trench gains protection up 40% for two turns, and other separatist allies gain protection up 20% for two turns. Tactical supremacy is defined as plus 30% critical damage and potency, and recover 10% protection at the start of the turn. If dispelled, recover 40% health, and then gain advantage and foresight for two turns at the end of that turn. And then I also think... Um, where is it? I want to say... I want to say I thought I saw it somewhere else. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Whenever an enemy dispels protection up from trench, they are inflicted with shock for two turns, which can't be evaded or resisted. So this is what I'm saying. Like, if you have a decently robust uh, protection up, like you have enough health to make that protection up, kind of uh, be a threat, then they don't want to bully through it more than they kind of want to dispel it. And if they do dispel it, then this shock triggers. It's pretty nice. Okay, that's uh, the kit breakdown. Let's talk about team comps and turn order. As always, the characters shown here are in order of desired modded speed. So, you know, a couple of you have pointed out in some of my videos that this, this turn order thing doesn't account for characters like Queen Amidala that might gain a whole bunch of turn meter at the start of battle. Fair enough, so I'm gonna choose my words a little more carefully. This is the modded speed order, okay? We know that Wat Tambor gets a bonus turn, you know, when you have that Zeta applied. So he'll actually, in practice, be going first, but in terms of modded speed, I would have Dooku faster. So, yeah, as far as three versus three goes, my favorite composition is Trench, Wat, and Dooku. It has shown resiliency to um, Wampa and CLS, uh, a variety of the so-called lesser counters, okay? Uh, it's the one that I like to set the most, and very rarely do I deviate from that in three versus three, but it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's not uh, worth ignoring to consider the other options. So you could have, you know, Trench Lead with Dooku and Newt. I see that sometimes. It's the idea of you've got Dooku for all of the stun and control he brings to the fight. You've got Newt who, you know, even if they kill him once, he'll come back. He'll put that extortion out there, increase the threat profile of the team from Trench's lead. I don't think it's one of the tougher options, but I do see it. So if you're dividing your resources this way, you could run it. They still have to think a little bit about what they're going to do with it. All right, next would be, you know, Trench lead with Newt and Django. I like this one maybe a little better than the one just above with Dooku because Jango's still going to be a little nasty. You don't have Dooku there to, to cover and put the rest of the team under stealth, so they could just ignore Jango. There's no Watt on this team to give him tank tech so that uh, you know he's, he's going to function like a tank. Um, I, it's, it's okay. I see people do it sometimes. The one thing that might give you pause is that with Jango on the team in 3 versus 3, He's going to have that damage immunity. So if you end up using a counter that involves turn meter reduction, if you keep him locked in that damage immunity, you're going to have a problem. Uh, I've done it. I've done it to myself many times. All right. And then, yeah, Trench, Django, and Watt. I saw this one here just last week in 3 vs. 3 Grand Arena. And the one thing that I observe thinking about it is, man, I just, I just don't want to do CLS or Bad Batch to it because of the TMR inherent in those counters. So I used something else and, and you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a real jam, but if somebody sets this on you, they're hoping that you might get locked up on, you know, like a turn meter thing here, you know, keeping Django locked in his DI and then you time out. All right, and then of course for five versus five, there really is only just the main team. So that is gonna be Trench Lead, Dooku, Watt, Newt, and Django. And you can see that the modded speed turn order that I have here. That's basically what I'm going for. Um, all right, let's talk about the mods themselves, all right? I did survey a few of the top players and I came back, um, you know, pretty confident that mine was representative of these players. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, all right? 
I went with the full tenacity. As I said, you can see I've got the speed arrow, um, health, tenacity, protection primaries. I go for bulk throughout on this character, okay? As the main focus of the enemy team, like they're really going to be trying to burn him down. So uh, being able to just blow him up is going to be a high priority for the enemy. Uh, I tried to bake in quite as much bulk as I could into this with tenacity, very little offense you're going to see on my mods because he isn't really the damage driver. And even if you're worried about him doing too little damage, you know, they're stacking offense on this team. It's going to be okay. But really, you have other heavy hitters here. So don't worry too much about it. Now, I did take this guy all the way up to Relic 9. Why? Uh, because, you know, just for that extra life total benefit mostly it's it's a pretty insane investment but in the very tip top of kyber one you will see players do this just because i mean you, you've already invested this far into the character you're already modding for bulk why not take the maximum advantage right so all that said you know with the talk about prioritizing health over protection we can see that the actual stats end up being fairly balanced at Relic 9, 91,000 health to 89,000 protection. And you guys can use uh, C3PO bot to compare yours to mine. There is the, the slash P unit command where you're gonna put in the character, then it's gonna you know ask you to select you know relics, um, and then you're gonna put in seven, like if your character is Relic 7. So you can compare uh, you know, a Relic 9 down to Relic 7, in my case, or if you want to take your trench and type in, you know, P unit uh, trench and then put in Relic 9, you'll see what yours is brought up to that to see it in scale. Uh, but anyway, his speed, 324, this is really fast. I put a lot of effort. You can see these mods are actually very, very fast mods. And I'm not saying these are easy numbers to hit, but this is kind of what I was thinking, right? Like we need him to not go down. We need him to not get locked down. And that's how I maximize these priorities. So 324 speed is really fast. I would say 300 is perfectly good as a nominal. Again, not really slower than 280, I would say. Um, the potency, incidental. He has some incidental amount of potency added, but don't forget that there's a flat amount handed out from the leadership. There's potency gain um, elsewhere in the kit. I want to say tactical supremacy is more percent potency. So you don't have to worry so much about the potency on this guy. Tenacity. Really, uh, I used to have him just over 220%. I had to move a couple things around. But 200% plus tenacity is kind of the ticket. Uh, that's a very top-end spec. You know, if you were able to get him up to, I don't know, 170, 180, you might be getting a lot of the same results. But again, this guy is designed to sit there on my defense and hopefully withstand the lesser counters of some of the very top players in the game. So that's kind of why I'm just pushing it for all that much more. So maybe, you know, 220 is like a stretch goal, 200 is nominal, 180 is like a minimum or, you know, like a floor to go for, something like that. Damage, I wouldn't worry too much about. Armor again, blah, 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 blah. So all down the line. But yeah, this this is, um, this is the modding profile. Tons of tenacity, lots of bulk. Let him be fast and let him just fly. That's the, the script. As far as applications goes, so I think this is a defensive team. I don't know, I, I, I can say, I can think of maybe a handful of times I've even heard of high level players using this team on offense. The fact is, the AI is often boneheaded about how to play teams, but they know how to play this one just fine. So I like this team on defense, and that said, we can take a look at you know, five versus five and three versus three. What are the types of teams that people are using against it? Uh, yeah, this is just showing the last season of five versus five and then this current season of three versus three at the time of this recording. So people, you know, last five season were using gas for 84% win. CLS trying to get it done, but probably often bungling that turn meter lockdown on Django, only 53%. Treya is a very common high-end counter used for uh, a full-blown trench team. And um, at the very top of the game, Treya is a little less of a factor in terms of how you're thinking about designing a board. But just outside of the very top end, a lot of the meta still hinges around how you might be drawing Treya out of the opponent. 
So the fact that this will very safely get it done for pretty decent banners, uh, 63 out of 65, you know, that's that's pretty damn good. Um, you know, but then then you've drawn their Treya. Malgus will do it. Uh, Star Killer is another super common counter that you can get 65 with. Uh, you know, later in the fight, when if you've managed to keep Django locked down the entire time, all you have to do is not apply, you know, not use um, a Mara Jade special that applies Stagger, and then you can just wait him out. So you can kill the entire team and then finish him off last. Ideally, maybe you even drop the ship and finish up for 65. But JML, uh, people will use Afra. Yeah, I don't see people getting a lot of mileage out of that. Yeah, 68%, that's not good. Reva. So, um, Seer Malikos, Bane, some people were pulling it off with Phoenix, that is pretty cool. Uh, BKM is a risky bet, yep, Bad Batch has that TMR, that's, that's tough. Gungans, that's actually kind of cool, but I would say, if you're drawing, if I'm drawing Gungans out of you for Trench in Grand Arena, I, I would take that as a dub, I think that's a pretty good draw. So, you see what I'm saying, like, it's not really calling for Galactic Legends, but it is calling for what I would consider to be B-level teams that are better than this B-level team, right? Some of these you could even say are like an A-minus team because they could be used to fight Galactic Legends like Gas, like Star Killer. So that's neat, you know? There's there's uh, there's a lot of ways to kill it, but not a lot of ways to kill it cleanly. So that's a fair one. All right, as far as three versus three goes, um, I sorted on with Django here, but let me put it back to Dooku real quick because i'll be honest with you guys the other compositions i talked about using django for all of the possibility of locking up cls and whatever the cls loses just fine when it's trench dooku and watt um if you're not all but the very best prepared so what are people using against this comp yeah lots of star killer okay it gets great manners so you know, you're, this is a team people are using to kill Galactic Legend Ray, and I'm drawing it out of you potentially here on Trench. Nice. Okay. Malgar ISC. Yeah, I've heard that one will get it done, especially here with the current Garkron. It's it can be it can be a problem. Gas ain't working. Uh, Wampa ain't working. All right, Treya will still get it done. Super clean. No surprises there. Gas is still just in the low 80s. That is surprising to me. Uh, DR, BSF, Malik is a slam dunk, of course. Dash, no good. Afrin, not good. Reva will do it. BKM will do it. So it's largely the same type of teams. You know, you see Malgus here, uh, Seer Malikos, all of that. You know, this is, this is a pretty, this is a pretty good, uh, good draw, right? It's drawing a lot of good teams out of people. So, you know, maybe if you're seeing your opponent this season of 3 versus 3 has their Malgar ISC in order, maybe you don't set it on the bottom front wall. But maybe you could otherwise, and then now you're potentially drawing uh, counters for Galactic Legends that you might set in the back row, that type of thing. So that's like a strategic play for how you're setting this team on your board. But it's, uh, it's pretty impressive what a no Omicron team can draw. Now, obviously, I will say that I didn't filter it on here for this sort, but almost all of these results, um, I would imagine, are going to be featuring the Watt Datacron. So, like a lot of, you know, uh, factions that have their Datacrons come and go, he may not always be on your defense, okay? But when there is a Kron that has even a reasonable amount of synergy, it doesn't even need to be a dedicated Separatist Kron. It can be nasty. Like before we had this current set 16 Watt Kron, uh, we had set 15 that was dark side, uh, you know, max protection and max health, bulk level three, and then high armor penetration. That was nasty with this team. You didn't have any level six that mattered. You didn't have any level nine that mattered. Just that amount, just the right combinations of a good bulk level three and high offensive stats like that was enough to still make a viable defensive case for this team. So it doesn't need to be quite as bespoke as a Separatist call-out Datacron to make this guy a very high-level defense. Uh, again, just it speaks to the value of the team. It's it's sneaky good how, how good this actually is. So yeah, this will be the first video in the series. I'll be referring back to it as I cover the other characters in this faction. Now, you might be saying, you know, oh, well, what if you wanted to use like your 
your Django with Bounty Hunter is something like that. Well, I'm not considering that, all right? Django with, when I get to the Django video, that's gonna be talking uh, with only respect to this team. Because in the modern game, I'm not using Django with Bounty Hunters anymore. That hasn't been a thing for me for quite some time. I wanna say that's maybe three, four years in the past, uh, at best. So when I get to it, you'll know why. It's, it's all about trench from here, baby. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning into this one. I love that you guys keep coming at me with the requests of the next characters and factions you want to see. Keep it coming. Love your comments and your interactions here on YouTube and on Discord. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and hit subscribe to stay tuned to see more. We're closing in on a thousand YouTube subs. It's a big mark, guys, and I appreciate you. you uh, this series on Mod Guides has really driven a lot of this growth, so really, again, just thank you all so much for the, uh, the interest and support. Um, all right, we'll see you again real shortly, and until next time, it's been real. It's been awesome. It's been real awesome. Take care.